Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. This morning, we are going to install a cooling fan kit on this 2024 Beta 300 Race Edition. Really simple process. I haven't done one in a, quite a while, but come on in. Let's check it out. So, cooling fan kits, I think, are actually way more important than people might think on the two strokes. Here's the kit right from Beta. There's the part number if it'll focus, maybe. Ta da! And you can buy these right on betausa.com. You can click Three C's Recreation as your dealer and we get a small percentage of the sale. So I would appreciate it. If you guys are buying beta parts, please consider us on betausa.com. So here is the kit and then here's my tool selection. I might be missing something and we'll figure it out as we go, but dielectric grease, cause we do have some connectors to plug in. 22 mil for the thermostat plug that goes in the bottom of the radiator. We have our Allen key set. I pretty much only need I think it's the four or the five, but we'll get there in a minute. We've got our rivet gun. And then the last thing is my handy dandy eight millimeter. And again, might be missing something, not sure. And then after this, I am going to install the rad guards and the hand guards, which we've got videos on all of that stuff already. And let's jump in, let's show them the kit real quick. Oh, our coolant catch, because we need this. And let's show them the kit racks. Let's show them what comes in the kit. So um, obviously we need the cooling fan. It's got the plug on it here. Pretty easy and straightforward. And then there's gonna be a bracket or two. So the two strokes, it's one bracket. This is gonna wrap around the radiator. And then obviously this little guy is gonna plug right into it. And then they give us a jumper harness, which we will dial it to grease up. And just a packet of easy install stuff. So we have our thermo switch, a couple bolts, and then a couple rivets. So not a lot of tools needed, and then they do give you directions, so check that out. So probably not in English because they forget, but they're there. So what we're gonna do, first things first, this bike has gas, yeah, I'm looking for gas in this one. There is gas in this bike. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the seat off. We'll get that out of the way. And the next thing is removing this gas tank. So to take a gas tank off a beta two stroke, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a couple things you have to do. So come on in Brax, let's show this, we're gonna pop Come up here. We're gonna pop this off of here. This is your vent tube. We're just gonna tuck it up out of the way. We're gonna grab this bolt on the back of the seat here. Not a lot of bolts in this job. Oh, I forgot a Phillips screwdriver because we gotta undo some coolant hoses. So we'll grab that in a second. Right off the bat, I'm already needing tools. So there's our under the seat bolt. We do have the side shroud bolt. So come on down here, Braxton. Let's show this one. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then after that, ooh, and uh, I need a set of side cutters. So I'll meet you on the other side of the bike. So let me grab some tools. So this is the side shroud on the other side of the bike here. Zing this one off. Let it fall in my hand whenever it's ready. Ta-da! And so this is the radiator that we're getting at right here. This is the left-hand side radiator. And so this bike has been started, so we got to remove the gas line and we have gas in it now. So um, what we're going to do is come on in Brax because we got to be able to show folks. We have to remove this little band on here. Ta -da. And then we're going to undisconnect the fuel line. So what I'm going to do, because there's gas in it, we're going to pop that under there. We're going to spin this connector and we got to get onto it with side cutter. So I'm already grabbing tools that were not on the table. Depends on your clip. It might already be exposed, but on this one, it was tucked in pretty good. We're gonna slide it down. And then I'm gonna use a flat head to kind of wiggle it off. It's new, so this is easy. If your bike was used, the fuel line might be a little more stuck on here. And I am gonna have some gas come out. That's gonna be normal. And probably more than I want it to be. So I'm gonna go dispose of this paper towel and I'll be right back. Okay, fuel line is disconnected. You can stay right there, Brax. So I'm gonna Pick up slowly on the gas tank here because I do have, if you look, actually come on in here, I'll show this. This map switch is moving with the gas tank and that's connected underneath it here. So I'm gonna slide this back and maybe, can you give it this view right here? See this connector that's wiggling? Can you see that in there by chance? Okay, that's our map switch. It's a three prong connector. Just gonna do that and we're gonna slide it through the frame and now it's connected here. And the last thing is gonna be this vent tube or this uh, drain tube, right? 
So this tube has this channel around the top of here. So if you spill gas, it's supposed to go in this channel and down and out. And this is where you can cut your hand sometimes because it slips off. I didn't cut my hand. And so there's our vent tube or drain tube out of the way. And now we are free. Ta-da! I'm gonna set this out of the way. All right, so we got our gas tank out of the way and I can see right here, here's my fan empty switch or I don't know, connector. So we're gonna get to that in a minute. We're gonna snip this, make it all cleaner. But first we have to get the coolant out of this thing. So come on down Braxton. And our drain bolt is on the water pump housing. And you can always tell because it has the copper crush washer behind it. So it's this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crack it loose just a little bit. And what we need to do now is get my bin under it. And the trick to this is, usually I have a longer extension, but I don't. Let's just get this under here. And not much should come out, and I'll show you in a second. So, you might get a trickle. Oh, we dropped the washer down in there, which is okay. Actually, I can get it out now. So let me get a pick tool and I'll get that out of there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna crack the radiator cap and then it's gonna send a steady stream out and I'm gonna tip this bin up. So, yeah, go ahead and try to show some of that. And that will actually show down here. This is probably more important. And now as I crack this, I gotta get it past the neural and I'm gonna pop it up, check that out. So all of our coolant is coming out now. Oh, cap went back on. So cap is in my hand. I'm gonna set it down here. And the goal is to catch as much of this as possible. I'm gonna tip the bike. I don't know if you can tell that we're doing that, but it's coming toward you. Okay, with pretty much all the cooling out, we're good to go now. Oh, a little bit more. It's gonna be okay because we're just wanting to read the coolant out of the radiator. So if not all the coolant is out of here, that's okay. Because we're not diving that deep into the motor project. So I'm gonna put this bolt back in now and torque it. That way we don't forget to do it. I'm always a big fan of sticking the bolts back in as soon as you're done with them. So I'm gonna grab the crush washer because that did come off and it ended up in the coolant bottle. So we've got the crush washer back on there, little copper guy. We're gonna slide them back in. And please do not over torque this. Um, I guess I'd have to look up the actual torque number, but my built-in torque wrench on my wrist tells me right about there is right where I want it. So after you break both wrists, you kind of get a built-in torque wrench. So we are good there. I'm happy with that. And what we're gonna do now is go to the other side of the bike. So to get this left hand radiator off, we have a couple things we have to do. Obviously we have to undo the two bolts on the front side, but first we're gonna undo our hoses. We got a lower hose, an upper hose, and then we have this uh, vent, I shouldn't say vent, drain tube, overflow tube. So we're gonna pull this off. And because the bike is new, it's being very nice to us. I'm just taking my time and I'm wiggling it. So that's out of the way. This is our other drain tube. And so now both of these, um, clamps are from the front. So let's get this white louver out of the way. So kind of give me a front angle there, Brax. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna kind of put some forward pressure on it and it pops it right out. And here's our two bolts exposed. But what I'm going after at the moment are these clamps. So, yeah, it's hard to show what I'm doing here, but loosening this clamp. And I like to get them as loose as possible because you don't want the the clamp to work against you in any way. So here, show this, come on over here. It's gonna be a pain in the butt, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna take the clamp off and just slide it around the corner. That way it's completely out of the way. So there's one, and then this one's kind of tricky. Sometimes you need a super short Phillips screwdriver to get to this one because of the angle. But I think Beta actually put that in a pretty decent spot for me with this one. We've got no slippage, so life is good. And what we gotta do, again, I like to get them all the way to the end. I don't want it to work against me. And I'm gonna go grab the eight millimeter because I left that on the counter. So I'm back, grabbed a really long extension just to get it completely out of the way. So crack that one loose, crack the lower one loose. Everybody keeps asking me if these radiators will fit an older model, and I still have not done that video. Shop's been super busy, and I have not had the need to rip one off of a new bike and put it on an old bike yet. So 
give us time because that day is coming. Okay, so in theory, we are loose. What I'm gonna do is come on over here, Brax. I like to just take a screwdriver, and this bike is still new, so everything's been really easy for me. I like to just kind of work these hoses loose, just to make sure they're not like stuck to the actual radiator. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here, just kind of try to break it loose. And again, because mine is, or because this bike is brand new, look at that, I like how easy that came out. It didn't even fight me. Sometimes you don't get that lucky in your garage because it it's had a bunch of heat cycles and it stuck itself right to it. And I'm just taking my time here. I'm not trying to set a speed record with this job. So we're just working it way out. Right about there. And I'm gonna take this clamp and I'm gonna slide it right back on the hose. So I don't forget which way it was going. So there and there, we are ready to take this to the counter. Now I am holding it like this because it's probably still some coolant in here. It's just kind of the way it works out. So let's come on over. I've already made a mess out of my workstation. And let's just see if there is any extra in here. We're gonna save it. So, oh, look at that. That would have been all over my clothes. So, Yay, we got some extra coolant. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna set it down, we're gonna go to work. So maybe what we'll do first is we'll save the sensor for a second so I don't hurt that. But let's open up this bag of goodies. And I probably should make sure I orient this. I think this is the only way it goes. Let's just look at it for a quick second and make sure. Let me grab the directions, make sure I put that on in the right. Yeah, okay, I have it right. Ta da! So, first, they have a sliding these on here. This is what's going to hold the bolts to it. Slide that one on. It takes a second to get the little clips to slide over. So, you can see in the beta radiator, it's already ready for these to go in. You got two on that side and two on this side. And we're just gonna have to stretch this a little because it seems like this bracket, if you come on in Braxton see how it's like a little bit, a little bit thin. But if you pull it over, it goes down over. It's actually a little bit snugger than I want it to be. And let's slide that there. And then, so all the holes line up perfect. One, two, and three. And then let's just set this here for a hot second, make sure I'm happy with it. Oh, those bolts look like they're going to line up just fine still. Even though I had to stretch it a little bit more, everything is still fine. So we're still perfectly good there. So let's go ahead and get this riveted to it. We'll do that first and we'll be right back. All right, so we got our rivets in. Everything looks great. And what we're going to do next is kind of set our fan right on here. And it's pretty straightforward. There's gonna be two smaller bolts and then one that's longer. You can see this one's a lot higher on this side for whatever reason. It's stepped there. So we're gonna line up all of our bolt holes and we're gonna go ahead. And this is that Allen key I was talking about earlier that I was gonna need. Let's see, I'm gonna guess, always guess wrong. Yep, so it's a three. Yep, perfect. So we'll get these inserted next. All right, so we got all three of our bolts tight on here. Everything is super good. It's mounted nicely. We're done. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we have to now install our thermo switch and make sure you keep track of this little crush washer in the back. That's what's going to keep it from leaking on us. And I usually put Teflon tape on there, so I'm going to grab some of that in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is, is remove this plug. And I always like try to get a feel for how tight this is in here so you're not like cranking down the new one too much. So. Um, haven't touched it yet. Let's see how, I don't know how much is actually, okay. There's not a ton of pressure on that. It was pretty, pretty loose. So I try to, when I put these in, I try not to crank them down too much. As soon as you put coolant in it, you'll see if it's got a little bit of a leak to it and it's going to be easy for you to get back on that with a wrench while it's on the bike and tighten it down. So this one is more of an O-ring. This one's more of a regular crush washer, like a drain washer. So I'm going to grab some Teflon tape real quick. Okay, so I went like two, a little over two rotations on the Teflon tape. I like to make sure it's got enough of it on there. I've had these leak before and I don't enjoy that. So got that on there and I can use the box end because it's still on the counter. 
And again, I don't know if you remember a second ago, I'm just gonna give it like a minimal amount of pressure for now, even though it never feels like it's enough. Just give it a snug. And again, I can, I can confirm this or make it better or worse while it's on the bike. So it's kind of tight and this is pretty simple from now. We just got to reinstall this on the bike. So let's bring it back over to the bike. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a little bit of a grease on these tabs right here, just to make it slide a little bit better. Again, this bike is new, so there's really nothing to worry about there. But anything I can do to make it easier, we're all about it. So we're gonna line our coolant hoses up as I'm pushing in. So get this bottom hose a little more steady. I think I found that the bottom hose is a little longer, so I start there. And then I kind of rock it on the top. And then I'm now we're looking up here at this top hose and it's in. So the next thing I have to do, which is going to be different than your job, is I'm going to have to mount the front radiator guard. I'm already this far into the job. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the customer. Um, so I'm going to get the upper and lower clamp retightened down, get the front guard on, and then we'll come back and we'll finish wiring this thing. Okay, so we got the radiator fully mounted. We got the bulletproof rad guards on the front. And now we're looking for the sensor, or for the wire. So if you look right here, I should say the plug. I'm gonna cut this zip tie. I always like to redo these zip ties anyway. I don't like how they, they get them on there. And we'll get the junk ones out of the way. And right here, so see this little guy? That's what we're gonna chase the other side of the bike. So I'm gonna give him the best routing, which I think is coming up this way and then through. So now Braxton, let's come back over to this side of the bike. And I probably have the better seat in the house than you do, so why don't you try to come over here. Get these zip ties out of the way so your chair rolls better. They actually give us a pretty long plug now, which is kind of cool. Um, but the idea here now is that we need to kind of clean this up and make it look good. So we have one, two, and three attachment points, and we have three points on here. So at this point, it's just a matter of you deciding what you like the best. So definitely going to stab my finger in the foot peg. I'm gonna pack this one with dielectric grease. I'm gonna pack these little guys. And then, oh, it's on this end. Let's go here, and pack this one. And now our hands are gonna be super slippery for the rest of the job, because that's the nature of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the big one. We know that this is gonna get plugged in here. And our limiting factor for how clean we make this is gonna be these little guys down here, because these have the longest travel, so. Let's see, if I tighten this more later, it's gonna go this way with it. I don't know if I'm better off to go this way, but then our wires are gonna be out here. I think I'm still happier having the wiring going this way. And these are not directional. You can put them on either peg. So even if I tighten this more, it's just gonna bring these wires down like this a little bit. I'd rather have them on that side than this side. I wanna keep them tucked into the bike. And so that's gonna limit our travel as far as where we go with all this pack of wires. And we need to keep this stuff out of the fan, right? We gotta keep all these wires way out of here. So let's get this turned and plugged in up here. I think I like how everything's coming together here so far. I do have like five or six zip ties to put this back together. I'm trying to keep my hand from getting all dielectric grease here. Okay, so everything is plugged in and actually, this kind of looks like if I just laid it, I think I'd bring this toward the front and then lay it in like this. I think I found it. I think I like all that. So our wiring is going to be tucked in. We'll get a couple more zip ties back on here. I won't make them as tight as Beta does. I don't, don't enjoy that. Oh, dude, look at that. It's perfect, Braxton. It's all tucked up out of the way. We're going to put one here holding this together so it stays away from the fan. So let me zip tie this and we'll come back to it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. We just want to make sure we put the gas tank on that none of this gets pushed. But I've got this fully away from the fan. Come on in here, back some more. So we got our sensor on the bottom. It comes straight up. It's tucked on the inside. Got this all zip tied nice and, I don't like to say tight because I don't like things too tight on the zip ties. And then I put two zip ties back on and I left this wire loose so it has some movement there. Everything else is exactly the way Beta had it. I'm happy with it. And what we're gonna do now is just plunk this gas tank back on and hook up our two, well, I guess our drain tube and our uh, map switch. So once you have to the other side of the bike, Rex. So I'm gonna bring the gas tank in. And before it gets too far, I gotta route this 
map switch underneath the frame, bring it up under, and they give you just enough play to do this. So that's plugged back in there, it felt solid. And then we gotta hook up our drain tube, which these things are kind of a booger sometimes, to get them to go back on all the way. And when I say all the way, it just has to go up a little ways, so that's back on. And now I'm gonna kind of rock this down Watch out for our map switch, make sure we don't pinch anything. And I'm gonna kind of give it some downward pressure here. So we're gonna kind of go this way with it. And I'm gonna pause and just look at all my wiring, make sure I'm happy. Oh yeah, it's way out of the way. So we are solid there. I'm gonna keep rocking it forward. And I'm pretty happy back here. My bolt hole looks like it's gonna line up. And then these, sometimes you have to mess with and kind of like pull down a little ways. So at this point, all I have to do so I'll hook this guy back up, put our three bolts in, one, two, three, hook up our fuel line and we're done. So, oh, coolant. Let's put coolant in this thing. So let me put the gas tank on first and then we'll put some coolant in it. Okay, so we got the gas tank tightened down, the three bolts, I got the fuel line hooked back up, got that cool little band bait it gives you back on the bottom. So we're good to go there. And now the pressure is on for me to fill this thing with coolant out of this bottle. So. There's no tricks to this. There's no, um, I don't know what I want to say, like um, like bolts down below, like bleeder screws. That's the word. There's no bleeder screws on the betas. So you just fill it right from the top. And what I would recommend is if there's a little bit left in this bottle, you'd want to take it outside, run the bike, let it run for just a minute or two, and then shut it back off and then retop it off. So there is a thermostat on these bikes, and sometimes a little bit of it gets trapped behind there. But we didn't lose any coolant today. It was pretty nice. And the new radiator design seems to have... Yeah. Nope, our gimbal's going crazy. Okay, so yeah. right there, kind of as expected. I have a little bit left, and that's okay. That's part of doing this. So let me shake it this way a little bit. You can kind of hear it fogging around in there. Oh, you can hear it burp a little bit. Gotta be careful not to put too much in so we don't lose it. Do it one more time. You can kind of, I don't know if you could hear that, but it just burped again. And we'll top this off here. Braxton, that's perfect. It's right where it needs to be, which is so sweet. So, okay guys, well thank you for watching. This was a Rad Fan, Reader Fan install on a 2024 Beta 300 two-stroke. Literally all I have to do now is put the seat on. I'd like to thank everybody for her support in our shop. If you're looking for a kit, please consider buying it off betausa.com and adding three C's as your dealer. It helps us out, helps us grow, helps me support all these guys at the races. We have a ton of cool stuff going on. So enjoy the ride and we'll see you on the trail.